My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. While labeling pipes and equipment sounds like a simple endeavor, the best practices for ammonia refrigeration can confuse even a seasoned technician. In this video, we'll examine the best practices for pipe markers, pipe color scheme, component markers, reference charts, and valve tags. We'll also conclude by sharing some considerations when installing markers and tags. Historically, IIAR Bulletin Number 114 has served as the gold standard for labeling ammonia refrigeration systems. Bulletin 114 was first published in 1991, and since that time, most ammonia refrigeration systems have followed its guidance. Until the March 2014 edition, the recommended ammonia pipe label in Bulletin 114 was yellow in color. In 2014, the Bulletin was modified to recommend an orange background color in order to align with another consensus standard named ASME A13.1. In the 2021 edition of IIAR Standard 2, the entirety of Bulletin 114 was incorporated as Informative Appendix Q. Before we dive into the best practices for labeling ammonia refrigeration systems, I want to answer a common question. If a system utilizes yellow labels, do they need to be replaced with orange labels? The answer is no. Both IIAR Standard 2 Appendix Q and ASME A13.1 are written to allow freedom to deviate from the marker color recommendations, so long as colors are applied consistently and reference charts are available. According to IIAR Standards 2 and 9, each piping main, header, and branch must be identified. Appendix Q of Standard 2 includes detailed recommendations for how the pipe marker should be designed. The background color should be safety orange. The word ammonia should be printed in black letters. The physical state abbreviation LIQ or VAP should be printed on yellow or blue bands respectively. The relative pressure high or low should be printed on red or green bands respectively. 70 PSI is the cutoff between high and low pressure. An arrow should indicate the direction of flow in the pipe. It should be noted that in some cases, the directional arrow should be omitted if the flow travels in multiple directions, such as in an equalizer line that connects a high pressure receiver to a condenser. A pipe service abbreviation should be printed in black letters. Here are some common abbreviations that are used. CD is for condenser drain lines, which are found at the outlet of condensers. HPL stands for high pressure liquid, which are pipes that connect high pressure receiver to expansion valves. HTRL designates high temperature recirculated liquid, which are pipes that connect to the outlet of ammonia research pumps. HTRS is high temperature recirculated suction, which are the pipes that connect to the suction outlet of overfed evaporators. HTS abbreviates high temperature suction, which are for the suction pipes on high stage compressors. HGD refers to hot gas defrost, which are on pipes designated to supply warm ammonia gas to evaporators for defrosting coils. RV is relief vent, which should be used on pipes connecting to the outlet of relief valves. This table shows all of the abbreviations listed in Appendix Q. Appendix Q suggests that pipe markers should be proportionate to the pipe diameter. Table 1 in Appendix Q has recommended marker sizes for various pipe diameters. It is recommended that ammonia pipes be color-coded to assist personnel in quickly identifying the ammonia state, pressure range, and temperature range inside the pipe. IIAR recommends the following colors be used. High pressure liquid pipes should be orange. High pressure vapor should be yellow. Light blue is recommended for low pressure, high temperature liquid and vapor. Dark blue is recommended for low pressure, low temperature liquid and vapor. For low, low temperature, Appendix Q recommends using purple. Gray is reserved for relief vent piping. Water and glycol piping should be green.
We strongly urge against painting any pipes red since red is widely used for fire sprinkler piping. Each major component should also be clearly labeled. A proper component marker will include the name of the equipment, the background color should be safety orange, all letters should be printed in black letters, component markers should be three and a half inches wide and long enough to accommodate the name of the component. Lettering should be two and a half inches high. Previous editions of Bulletin 114 recommended that component markers include a pressure band, so it is common to see that configuration still today. Section 8 of Appendix Q recommends that each facility post a reference chart which explains the color scheme used. This is especially important if you choose to deviate from the recommendations in this video. A wide variety of tag types are used to label ammonia refrigeration valves. IIAR2 requires that valves listed as emergency shutoff valves be clearly identified at the valves themselves and in the system schematic drawings. Some facilities elect to label every valve in their system. At minimum, we recommend that zone isolation valves be clearly identified. It is worth mentioning that some markers and tags will last longer than others. Most pipe and component markers are self-adhesive, but these tend to deteriorate when located outdoors or on surfaces that are hot. While it will cost more upfront, purchasing labels with UV protection and that are offset from the equipment will last longer. Consideration should be given to equipment that will be covered in ice to ensure that the component marker does not become illegible. I hope you found this video on labeling ammonia refrigeration systems insightful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.